This video is going to show you how you can use an isometric grid to help you draw your isometric board game packaging designs. For your homework, you need to do four different ideas for this packaging and you need to be able to draw them in isometric accurately. At this stage in year seven, we wouldn't expect you to be able to do that without a little help. So an isometric grid looks like this and you have three sets of lines. You've got vertical lines that come straight down. You've got lines that go up from bottom left to the top right. And then you've got another set of lines that go from the bottom right up to the top left. And that are the only lines that you should be drawing when you draw in isometric. So if I show you with this grid, to draw a basic cube, you would just follow the lines on the grid. You shouldn't draw a line anywhere that there isn't a guide already for you. So this produces the top of our cube. We can then draw the sides coming down and then match those together and that has drawn a cube. You are going to need to do something a little bit more complicated for your packaging because you need to be able to divide it up to hold a rectangular board, six counters, chance cards, a dice and a leaflet. So you've been looking at more of a rectangle than a square. So obviously for a rectangle you would just make one side a lot longer than the other. Still sticking to the lines on the grid, you don't want to draw a line that isn't on the grid. Obviously, you would do this with a ruler. Okay, and then that has obviously drawn your rectangle. You can then divide this up by again following your lines to create the sections for inside. the tray for you to be able to divide everything up together. So all you need to do is follow this grid and you will be absolutely fine. In order for this to work though, you are not to do what I've just done and draw directly onto the grid. What I'd like you to do is place the grid underneath a piece of A4 paper and you will see you can see the grid through quite easily. You will then use your pencil and a ruler to then draw on your design. So you just do exactly the same task. You can paper clip these two pieces of to paper together or stick them with a very small bit of masking tape so that they don't move. But all you're gonna do is draw in your shape following the lines on the grid. So you can see here I'm using my ruler and my pencil so that I get nice straight lines, taking my time to double check that it's matching the grid underneath. And what you will need to produce is four pieces of A4 paper with four different designs. On the paper, we want to see a closed view. So this is what the board game packaging would look like with the lid obviously onto the tray. Then draw the open view to show how the tray inside is going to be separated up. Try and keep them the same size if possible. If not, you can always draw one slightly bigger than the other. If I'm honest, the most important one is the tray because this is gonna be showing how you are going to divide it up so that all of the components can fit into your board game packaging. So remember, we need to divide it up so that we've got somewhere for a rectangular board to sit. Okay, so you can see there I've got my rectangle for my board to sit in there. I've then got six counters that I need to sit in. So I might put my counters into this area here. And then I've got the chance cards and the dice. So I'm gonna make a little small section here for the dice. 
Again, all I am doing is following the lines on the grid. I haven't drawn any line that's not on the grid. And then my chance cards can sit here and the leaflet can go on top of the design. So you can see there I've got section here for the board, section here for the counters, chance cards, the dice, and then my leaflet can sit on top of the board here. So all you need to produce is four different pieces of A4 paper with four different designs. On each paper I want the closed view and then the tray view to show how you're going to divide everything up. Once you've done all that you do need to annotate your designs. So for each design you need to annotate to explain how the packaging will hold each item. So how is it going to hold the board? How is it going to hold the counters, the cards, the dice and the leaflet? You need to explain the shape of the box that you've gone for. So if you've gone for a cube, a rectangle, a triangle, you need to explain why you've chosen that shape. I would like you to then give me two good points about the packaging design. So what makes it a good design to hold a board game? Two bad points, so two areas you feel could do with being improved, because they don't work really well. And then give me what those improvements could be. If you manage to do all of that, you will enable yourself to be in the running for a one, for an outstanding for your homework. But that does mean I need to see four pieces of A4, you ruler and a pencil used very accurately following the grid. No line should be on there other than what's on the grid underneath. All of those annotations, the good points, the bad points, something to improve, the shape you've chosen, how the packaging is going to hold each item, and that is what I would like to see. There is plenty of revision, uh, resources to help you on the frog, and again, if you're unsure, just ask your teacher and they will help you.